And there we have a key for the heavy metal guitar's machine head. And it's hot. Vibrations are everywhere and occur in many forms. The most obvious form is physical or mechanical vibration. For this program, I've built a series of machines to demonstrate some of the good and bad effects vibrations have on our lives. When we first started work on this machine, we ran it directly from the old drop hammer mechanism in the ceiling of the workshop. Um, it was a bit frightening, really. It's desperately fast. As you can see, all the vertical structures of the machine itself are vibrating like mad. It puts a lot of strain on all the bearings and mechanisms within the machine. The spring's working overtime here. And uh, it's just a bit scary, really, in case anything breaks. Turn it off! Vibration might not seem much of a problem to you, because you've not got one of these in your front room. However, if you live in Japan, which is frequently struck by earthquakes, it might be a different story. Trucks with simulators drive around the country, giving the people demonstrations of what a severe quake feels like. TV programs are produced to show what could happen in an ordinary office and give advice on how to survive. I was going to make a very large stringed instrument based on... Originally a bathtub, I thought there's a nice sandbox. I thought, ah, well, why not just go for it and make a giant-sized guitar? So I uh, did a drawing around a French guitar and scaled it up to three times its normal size. And here we have the heavy metal guitar. It's first ever stringy. Oh. Physical vibration is most commonly perceived as sound. And the most emotive form of sound is music. I can't play fretless guitar. I can't play guitar. I'm really scared of this falling over while I'm working on it. Mm. Uh, wibble wobble. This is an old floor polishing machine, like they use on parquet floors and stuff like that. Normally this would have a big, heavy, wet mop on it, which rotates as you can see, in that kind of slightly eccentric fashion. This movement is compensated for by a counterbalance here. Having taken all the mop and stuff like that off, uh, we now have a fairly rapidly rotating machine that's in a state of imbalance. This is something that's generally avoided by engineers, and I'll just show you why. One effect of vibration is that it causes repetitive bending of components within the machine, which may lead to metal fatigue, as this demonstration will eventually show. It's gonna go. This may not look much in this context, but if it was the wing of an aeroplane you were flying in, you wouldn't be too pleased about it. Stay there. <laughs> but hey, it's not all bad. There are constructive uses of vibration in industry. For example, the vibrational conveyor belt. Down here you can see a floor polisher similar to the one that we had earlier. And this is now attached via a uh, mm, sort of movable structure to this um, slightly sloping deck here. In industry, these things are used to move stuff around factories and also to grade different types of product. For example, if you had holes in here, you might be able to sort pineapple from Emmental and lobsters. This particular model isn't quite capable of that, of course, but uh, a bit of research and development, perhaps we'll get there.
An instrument that is frequently used to study vibration is an oscilloscope. This is because it reveals the vibrations as a waveform. So I've built a oscilloscope to demonstrate different sorts of waveforms. There are two main features of a waveform. One is its amplitude, which is the distance it moves from side to side, and the other is the frequency, which is the speed with which it does it. So this, for example, would be a high amplitude, low frequency vibration, in the terms of this snake at least, and this would be a low amplitude, high frequency vibration. Basically. The front and back panels of the guitar were plasma cut from 3mm plate steel. Then I spaced them apart and bent the sides round using a mixture of brute force and art welding. It weighs about 75 kilograms. The strings on the big guitar are all tuned to certain frequencies. If I play the same frequency as, for instance, this top E here on the loudspeaker, it will cause the string to vibrate in harmony with the loudspeaker. This phenomenon is known as resonance. So it still vibrates for a while after the speaker stops. So here we have the first test of the liquid vibrating Cladney effect machine. Here we have white cut, which is the stuff we use in off-cut tools and stuff, which has the advantage that um, it's white, so it'll show up on the screen, but it won't smell horrible like milk wood if we use that. I hope this doesn't leak. There's an 80 quid speaker down here. Let's try it with just that much at first and see what it does. The sound vibrations from the speaker underneath this tray are creating the patterns in the liquid. The patterns change when I adjust the amplitude, or volume, and frequency. You can get a similar effect at home when you put a cup of tea on top of the washing machine when it's spinning. <laughs> you get clearer patterns with solid particles, in this case sand. So we're now at 20 cycles a second, which is the average lower limit for human hearing. Below this, really, all we hear is the sound of the sand pattering up and down on top of the membrane, and not the actual sand itself. They call this low frequency sound infrasound, and it's all, it's, it's all over the place, really. You get it from moving vehicles, compressors, all sorts of things. But there was quite a lot of work done on this infrasound in the early 60s by a professor Vladimir Gavrao. Something quite unexpectedly happened. It was an awful beat, a noise. The head seemed to burst. It came from there. But when we closed the window, it became still stronger. In the other room, there was complete silence. It was in contradiction with acoustical laws. So we decided to investigate it. Infrasound of great intensity beamed at a wall could cause collapse. At a man, death. The French suspect the death frequency to be seven cycles per second. Danger comes, say the scientists, when you hear it in a room, as long as the room is of the right size to induce sympathetic resonance. That dangerous length, 36 foot, 4 inches. <sighs> Ultraviolet radiation. Hey, you now there's a thing. Too much of it and you get skin cancer, too little of it and you get SAD. Ultraviolet radiation, like all other forms of light, is part of what's known as the electromagnetic spectrum. This is yet a whole other field of vibration that we've not had time to go into in this program. So many vibrations, so little time, eh? Ah, well, if music be the food of love, let's play the heavy metal guitar. Mm -hmm. 